Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today we are checking out some Hollywood and some other interesting cars at the Volo Auto Museum just outside of Chicago. I've heard a lot of good things about this place and I'm going to take you in with me to check it out right now. Let's go see what we can find. Now it is a little cold for Jurassic Gardens today, but I will come back over summer and we will check it out. Now this place has four showrooms and we're going to go through all four, plus crime and punishment. Yes, we will see that. Now I should note this place is known for having a lot of Hollywood cars, prop cars, things like that. But it's also a functional showroom with cars for sale with a lot of classic cars. This is pretty cool, but they have a lot of interesting stuff here. They have... Corvettes, they have um, Lamborghinis, they have just a little bit of everything. There's some Model T's in here. Uh, pretty much anything that you could possibly ever want as a car collector or just as a, you know, kind of an automotive person. A 1974 Corvette convertible for $58.9. Now, if you're in the market for a new car, you'll find whatever you could possibly want here. If you uh, don't have the budget for this, like I don't, um, you can always come in here and see all these cars plus the museum for $19.95. Oh, this is pretty awesome here. I would love to have one of these. But you do go through the first showroom before you go in to see all the Hollywood cars and all the others. But I just figured I'd show you a couple of these first, just to kind of give you a feel for what kind of things they have here. But just seeing the price tags on some of these is kind of interesting, because these are cars you don't see. You really don't see these on the road, and you don't see them very many places. And some of these, I'd imagine, are quite rare. A 1930 Ford. It's hard to believe that some of these cars are that old, but, you know, some of these cars are restored so well that it, it's almost like stepping back in time. All right, here is the War Room. You know, they have some army vehicles in here. There's a tank in here. A lot of simulated gunshots. Now, if any of you guys watching have actually served in a war, thank you for your service. I know that none of this stuff would be an easy way of living, even if just for a couple of years. So my hat's off to you. But as a historic nut, it is interesting to see a lot of this stuff. That's pretty cool that you can peek in here and see what things look like in here. So this place is a little bit more than just cars.
And here is Shrek and his family. And Donkey. And the little ones are being devious, it looks like. Now here is the next showroom. More cars for sale. And as you can see, these are all classics. But so much to see and do in here. You could easily spend hours in here looking at all these cars. And the Terminator. It would take a little bit of strength to lift that casket. And the Terminator 3 car. As you can see the bullet holes in the side. Pretty cool piece of Hollywood memorabilia right there. The 1989 Cadillac Hearse. Driven in the graveyard scene. That is pretty awesome. Arnold sat right there in that seat. And here we have the Pep Boys. These things are huge. But pretty awesome. Maybe just a little bit creepy. And this looks like the Beverly Hillbillies wagon. The Jalopy. The mannequins were custom built for this truck. That is pretty cool. Could you imagine riding one of these things around now? And here we have the Bluesmobile from the Blues Brothers. Classic with Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Signed by George Barris. And also signed here by Dan Aykroyd. As you remember, Elwood Blues picked up his brother Jake from the Joliet prison in this police car. Now, if you want to read any of these informational plaques, feel free to pause it. But this basically states that none of the original Bluesmobiles survived production. So none of the Bluesmobiles that you see now are going to be original from the film. They were all made as reproductions or as promotional cars. But it's still pretty cool. And here we have one of the Ghostbusters cars. And right behind it is the screen-used motorcycle Nicolas Cage used in Ghost Rider. Hopefully you can read that a little bit there. Pretty nice bike. And here is Ecto-1. Now so many of these cars, you see a lot of the similar cars in most of these auto museums, so it makes you wonder how many of these cars exist. Um, as you guys remember, I went to Historic Auto Attractions back last summer, and they also had an Ecto-1. It looks like both of the original screen-used cars are still owned by Sony. And here is General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. Now it says this was the only one that was available, or this was the first one that was available to the general public for sale. And it's the only one left from season one. That is in fantastic shape. And it's signed right back here by cast members of the Dukes of Hazard. And if you like the Fast and the Furious, here is one of the Fast and the Furious prop cars.
And here's another one. Looks like Furious 7. Now, it's hard to look at some of this stuff without thinking of what happened to Paul Walker. That was just tragic. But pretty cool cars. And a nice tribute to Paul. And over here we have a land speeder from Star Wars. And Yoda. And here we have the James Bond car. Now I'm always curious how some of these car museums obtain these cars, but even more so than that, I really wonder how much they spend on these cars because so many of them are, you know, they're one of a kind for most of these. 2001 Aston Martin. But like I started saying before, so many of these cars, you see more than one of them. And obviously there was many of them used in each production, but there's also a lot of reproductions of a lot of these cars. Here's one from Transformers. 1977 Camaro. And this, I love this movie. Gone in 60 Seconds, Nicolas Cage. This was the infamous Shelby. The car that Nicolas Cage was afraid to steal. And if you guys remember Knight Rider, here is Kit. Now there's no information on this one, so I'm assuming this is not the original. If anyone out there knows where the original of this is, please let me know in the comments because I'm kind of curious if it still exists. And here's Back to the Future, the famous DeLorean. with the Gray's Almanac in the mirror or in the uh, windshield. Now there's also one of these at every car museum and there's so many collector models of this and I really don't know how many of these they actually made for production, but this one looks pretty spot on. And right behind that is the National Lampoon's Vacation Wagon Queen Family Truckster signed by Chevy Chase. And if you guys saw the video that I made of Chevy Chase doing the Christmas commercial a f uh, about a month and a half back, this is the car that they used in that commercial. They brought it out from this museum here. And that's when Chevy Chase signed the front of it. I was actually there shooting a video for that event. Aunt Edna, except that's hopefully not really Aunt Edna. And here's one of the ducks from Indiana Jones. Some pretty interesting pieces though. Everything here is a conversation piece for sure. Even if any of these weren't screen used, which a lot of them are, but there's obviously a fair amount of reproductions in here as there are in any car museums. Now this is fantastic. The alien buggy. I'd drive that around. And that's a little bit creepy. Now this is not labeled. I'm not sure what film this came from. If any of you guys know, please let me know. This car is 
really, really cool, but I have no idea what this is from. It looks something like maybe, um, you know, the mask or something like that, but this doesn't look like anything that I remember seeing from that movie, but it's kind of got that feel to it. And back here is the the Barbie mobile. And it looks like this was used uh, in parades at Epcot in Walt Disney World. Kind of an interesting vehicle. 1970 pink Cadillac convertible from Walt Disney World. And over here is one of Elvis's cars. This thing's pretty awesome. 1974 custom built Cadillac. Now there's a lot of Elvis cars around there. He drove a lot of different cars. He really liked his Cadillacs, but he also gifted a lot of cars to his friends, to his family. Elvis bought a lot of cars and there are a lot of his cars out there. But some of the cars that, I mean, this was one of Elvis's that he personally used. There's the Taking Care of Business logo right there. Right there is where the king would have sat. Plenty of room for some of the Memphis Mafia. Now this is kind of like a cross between a hatchback and a spaceship. And that's kind of weird placement for King Kong, but uh, he's here too. And Charlie Chaplin. Now some of these cars are kind of reimaginings or or just plain imaginings of different cars, but this is pretty cool. Jay Orberg, Hollywood Cars Collection. The Little Tramp. I would drive this. Grandpa Munster's Dragula. This is awesome. The Munsters is one of those classic shows. The Coffin Dragster. Boy, what I'd give to have one of these. Ride this around the neighborhood. I'm sure I'd make a lot of friends. These would look pretty great in the house, too. Ah, uh, this is fantastic. Look at the detail on this. And here is the, the car or one of the cars from Greece. And here's a Batmobile. No car museum would be complete without a Batmobile or two. The 1966 Batmobile. I'm having a really hard time reading this from here, so I can't tell if that's if this is the original or if this is a reproduction. But maybe you guys can see that. Hopefully some of those plaques are a little bit easier to read when you're actually playing this back. 
1959 Corvette from Animal House. It was used by Tim Matheson. That was a great movie too. It was the first time I ever saw John Belushi on, on camera. This is peculiar. Johnny Cash guitar car. You can see a fretboard here. The guitar body is the, the rest of the car. I've never seen anything quite like this. It's another one from the Jay Orberg collection. Twenty-eight foot long guitar dragster. That is really something else. And if you guys think we've seen a lot already, there's still more to go. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this tour. Now let's move on to the next building. Here's some The Abominable Snowman from Monsters, Inc. 1932 covered wagon. In 1931, there's some pretty old vehicles in here, and then some. Um, there's some really old campers that date back to the 1930s, like this. You know, I don't know a ton about cars, so coming to places like this is very educational. But I really didn't know that they made motor homes back in the 1930s. This is pretty cool to see. And if you guys have seen Captain Phillips with Tom Hanks, this is the lifeboat. Now you can't go in here, but we can kind of peek in. Well, let me zoom in back there. If I remember right, I think Tom Hanks, I think his seat was seat 15 back there. If my memory serves me correctly. But that's pretty cool. And also out here is some life-sized statues of the Simpsons sitting on a, sitting on a bench. Now, I don't know what this is, but this is pretty cool. Like some kind of experimental copter. And over here is Herbie from Herbie Fully Loaded. Now, this is one of my favorites as a kid. I used to love watching the Herbie movies. It's pretty cool to see this. There's a total of 35 Herbies was built for use in the, in the film Herbie Fully Loaded. That's a lot of Herbies. You wouldn't think they'd go through that many cars, but, you know, that's kind of how Hollywood works. Little peek on the inside. 101 Dalmatians. This is just a cute display. It's worthy of looking at. Now this building has a fair amount of Disney, Disney cars and Disney displays. This would be a great place to take the kids. But a lot of interesting stuff here. You got a SpongeBob mobile over here. Can't say I've seen anything like this before, but it's pretty darn cool. And this, a roller skate car? I think this is another one from that Jay Orberg collection. 
very peculiar, but where else are you going to see something like this? You know, these are things that you don't even know exist. And the Joker, one of the more modern Batmobiles. This is really, really cool. Now, I don't see anything on here about whether or not this was screen used or not. It very well could be, but there's no way of knowing for sure. And then just over here, here is a piano car. And a lot of things in here, especially anything music, you can put coins in it and it'll start and it'll play. But that's another thing that's just really, really cool. If you guys ever went to the zoo as a kid, I remember these. You used to be able to put, I think it was, back then it was like a dollar for one of these, but they mold wax, um, like little wax figures. They used to have monkeys and tigers and elephants and things like that at the zoo. But these all have Disney-related wax statues that you can buy. Ten bucks a piece, inflation. The prices have went up a little bit. But you'll always remember the smell of these machines. Here's the cat in the hat outfit worn by Mike Myers in the, the film. Now, I will say that we've only touched a very small amount of what's actually here. We're not quite done yet, but I just wanted to tell you that there is so much more to see and do here than what I can show on this video. And here we have the beagles. Now you can put a, uh, a token in the machine and it will play a Beatles song and then there's an Elvis one that will play an Elvis song and Michael Jackson. Now we're stepping into the crime and punishment section. Right here. I touched cars at the Volo Auto Museum. I was bad. Here's a wood carved gun, similar to the one that John Dillinger would have used when he escaped from jail. It's hard to believe that that would be convincing. Old Sparky, one of the infamous electric chairs. Now this is just wicked. The last gasp, the first gas chamber. Look at how small this is and how claustrophobic you would feel in it. I mean, if you were sentenced to death, it wouldn't really matter anyway, but it, this thing is tiny. Oh, this thing looks brutal. Take a look at this seat. They would make people sit on this. And it's also on the back and on the armrests. Yeah. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tour of the Volo Auto Museum. This is the Crime and Punishment Room, and as of right now, our sentence starts now. Thank you guys so much for watching and catch you on the next video.